Geraldo Rivera comes in right now with his perspective. It's good to see you as always, big brother. Uh, am I off hey, the Chris. mark, or do you believe that the bloodbath is is too bloody? Well, I, I heard about it before I saw it, uh, and I was not shocked when I heard about it. I said, uh, there he goes again, a guy that calls uh, undocumented migrants animals and says that they're poisoning the blood of our country. Uh, is certainly not known for moderation or being uh, uh, modest in his uh, in his speech or his analogies. So I was totally willing to believe that he went down that road, that he was calling for another January 6th or threatening one if he wasn't uh, wasn't reelected. Uh, and then I saw it and you played the clip at the top and it was pretty clear that the bloodbath he was referring to was to the United States auto industry. If China is indeed allowed to uh, create these EV manufacturing plants on the southern border of the United States without hiring any Americans, it would be a bloodbath for the U.S. auto industry. They'd be out of business. So uh, I, I think that in this particular case, this limited case, uh, his hyperbole uh, and his uh, sloppy use of language was not meant uh, to threaten violence. It rather was a, a kind of a vivid, colorful, uh, you know, a metaphor talking about what happens to the auto industry if China can set up shop uh, down in Nogales. You know, it's no small irony, my friend, that on the one hand, you have critics of Trump right up until the president of the United States wanting to use everything that he says as proof that he should be disqualified from office. And at the same time, they are pushing the arguments that are before the Supreme Court right now that what you're allowed to take in on the Internet should be far more curated, moderated, censored uh, than what you can get right now. And I watched those arguments today, and I'm very worried about this issue. And I thought that that was what bothered me. The only thing that bothered me about the Elon and Don interview uh, was, one, I don't like people going after anybody I know, but also he was saying, hey, Elon, you got to take down some of this stuff about the replacement theory and other things. And I think that's a scary notion. And I think there are a lot of people in the media and in this country and in positions of power who want it. Do you think it's a big deal or am I too frightened? I think that the people that want free speech want free speech as long as they are not the targets of what they perceive to be, mm -hmm. uh, you know, some inequity, some unjust uh, uh, remark, some smear. Uh, you know, so they're fine with the freedom of speech and they want it, except when it affects them personally. I think that in this Fifth Circuit and in the Second uh, Circuit in uh, New York, what you're going to have is the pr Supreme Court saying the government has the same right as any other lobbyist in D.C. The government can, mm -hmm. can say, hey, listen, uh, uh, Twitter, uh, that's uh, too extreme, or uh, hey, Facebook, cool it on that, we don't like it. That's not coercion. That's not illegal. They have the same mm -hmm. right. They have the same freedom of speech the government does as we, the citizens, do. I mean, in a in a broad in a broad uh, sense, not a legalistic or constitutional sense. But the government can't. That's what they're there for. They're there to say, uh, do you really want to talk about uh, uh, you know the this vaccine stuff without uh, appropriate uh, citations or scientific backing or so forth? Uh, and I, I I think the the worry uh, is kind of hypocritical, and I I think that's the problem with, uh, with uh, the, the, the running around, my hair's on fire, uh, because uh, Twitter's now going to uh, allow, say, uh, it's good for you to have pimples. It'll help you mature. Uh, you know, with some crap like that. It's, uh, you know, it's ease up a little bit. Don't, don't uh, you know, uh, traffic uh, or don't uh, uh, participate in any social media site that offends you. Just hit them in the pocketbook, ignore them or criticize them. But for goodness sake, don't you try to uh, to say what's right and what's wrong. That's what's wrong with 230. You know, I listened to the Bobby Kennedy interview you just did, Chris, and I think that he's very underrated, by the way. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, the, the problem, the, the problem is you've got to have what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Uh, you know, if, if I'm going to say things about you on Twitter, you've got to be able to say things about me on Facebook and, and so forth. And I worry that uh, 230 protects the sites from, uh, you know, uh, we, we are fair game. The sites are not. I think that's BS. I think the site should be uh, uh, should be fair game if indeed there's a there's a litigation to be had. But 
the, the point is, let the government be the government. It has some freedoms and it mm -hmm. has some duties and it has some responsibilities. Let them do their job and, uh, you know, we'll just get out of the way. We'll say whatever we want. No one's moderating me and so forth. I have no problem with the government being among the persuaders. It's when they become the coercers uh, that there is a problem. And I think that there was a problem during the pandemic uh, with that. But more important than anything else, I want it all out there. I don't want anybody making any decisions about anything that is not overtly illegal. If it's illegal, like kitty porn, I'm OK. Other than that, let the best idea win. Geraldo Rivera, having you on the show, always the best idea. I got to oh, jump. You're great. Thank Thanks. you very much Thank for your you. take. Hey, thank you for watching. Please go to NewsNationNow.com, NewsNationNow.com, and you can find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button down below. Then you will get more of NewsNation's fact-driven coverage.